I'm reading my two most anticipated horror books of the year, Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay and How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLuey. Both books are centered around cursed films and the horrifying things that happen to the people involved in them. First, we're reading Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay, which centers on a cursed film that's never seen the light of but day, but it's developed a strong cult fan base. Years later, Hollywood is set to reboot it and we're uncovering the dark mystery of what happened during the making of the film. Okay, so I'm about 50 pages into this book and so far I'm liking it, but I feel like I still have no idea what's going on. So the story takes place in present day where we're following a character who played this character in the movie called the thin kid and he's seemingly the only one who is left from the actual movie and he's working with producers in the present day to reboot this movie and we also flash back to the time where he is asked to be a part of this movie by his college friends, classmates, and they're basically making a horror movie and they didn't want to let him read the script because they want him to experience it as if he were the actual character so he doesn't know what's going on until like moments before it actually happens which I think is interesting and I think will obviously come into play once we learn what actually happens on this movie set. Pretty sure that's what the directors did for the Blair Witch Project. I don't think there was a script and I think that they basically let the three actors kind of improv from what what direction they were given from the director but the directors and stuff would mess with them at night and they would do stuff that the characters had no idea what, what was happening so their screams and their reactions are authentic and that sounds what like what the movie is trying to do in the horror movie love that we get basically clips from the script where we're actually reading the actual script that these two young girls put together. So far I'm liking it and it feels like it's reading very quickly because it incorporates the script elements in there. Okay, so I'm currently 154 pages into horror movie and I still don't know what's going on. I really like that we are getting to get glimpses of the actual script, but it's raising more questions and answers for me because I have no idea what kind of movie they're trying to make and it seems like fiction is blending into reality. We have this main character, the thin kid, who is kind of blind to everything they're making as well. He's kind of us in a sense where we're finding out what's happening as it's happening. So he is playing a character who is being kind of tortured by these group of teens and you don't know why and it's set in an abandoned school and it's just weird. I don't know what the purpose is of what they're doing and I'm assuming we'll find out but as he gets further into the production of this film he starts to offer himself up more to these filmmakers and there's a scene where he has to get burned with cigarettes and they don't have cigarettes enough cigarettes to fake the burns so he offers himself up to be actually burned so that they could have a better visual on camera and I'm getting the sense that because he's so insecure and he wants to be connected with these people and just help them bring this creation to life this art and he's willing to sacrifice himself for art. From reading this I'm getting the sense that this movie has become kind of a cursed film and it's built that reputation because all of the people involved went on to have bad circumstances in their lives. I'm thinking there was some kind of trial involved and my guess is that they'd go really too far with trying to make the perfect movie. It's feeling kind of almost meta in a way. Do we expect to see all of this horrifying stuff 
as a viewer because we are voyeuristic and we want to see horrible things and that's why everybody's like so obsessed with this movie this cursed film i think that sometimes the script reading gets a little annoying because I don't think reading scripts is fun. I used to date a guy who was a director and screenwriter that made me read his scripts occasionally, like I would enjoy it. But listen, it's boring as fuck reading scripts, okay? It's not fun because you have to, you have to visualize everything. And it's hard to do that when it's like literally just telling you things without being able to see it. It's just weird. It's not the same as reading a book. Movie better get good. I want to see some people die, okay? Because I mean, uh, spoiler, some limbs have been cut off. I just, I just have to say that some limbs have been cut off. Cut off some more, okay, Paul? Can we Every time I read this book, I forget that Paul Tremblay is also from New England, and there's... A mention of Rock and Chalk at the DCU Center, which was a convention I loved. It was a horror convention that it was the first horror, first and pretty much only horror convention that I've ever been to because I've never leave. It was just so cool. I remember going there like when I was really young, my brothers, my dad, and we met all of the people we wanted to meet from horror movies. I met George Romero there and just had a blast and there was also a concert element to it too where they had like insane clown posse and a bunch of other heavy metal people guar i think and then one year they had rob zombie and alice cooper in concert together and we went to the concert it was amazing <laughs> I've read this and processed it a bit and while it was my most anticipated horror read of the year I didn't love it. This was also my first Paul Tremblay book that I've ever read so I was glad to finally experience his writing style for the first time. I love the concept of Hollywood rebooting this cult horror movie and that this movie is kind of cursed and has a really strong reputation. That it was very ambitious of Paul Tremblay to create a script within a movie but the script is where I struggled because initially I loved the script. I was very excited to find out what this movie was, what these kids did, and how we got to the point where we are in the story where it's being remade. But as I read, the script is just so hard to follow because it doesn't follow a traditional script format. It's very descriptive. It tells you character thoughts and motivations, and that's not normally how a script is. Usually script is dialogue and some direction. He said there was a point for all of that. I don't know what that point was. Also, I didn't find the movie to be very good or scary. Like, and the way that the characters talk about it, they talk about it like the writer was a genius and I'm just like, where's the genius here? I don't get it. The script just was very monotonous and boring. It was like the same thing happening and I was just bored. I'm like, I can't understand how this could create a cult following except some horrible stuff happens in the real world of these kids making this script. So that's the only part I can imagine. Yeah, people would be obsessed with finding out how to watch this movie and see these horrific acts actually play out. I loved the parts where we get to see the thin kid now as he's communicating with Hollywood about the reboot, but we didn't get enough of that. It was just like little bits here and there. I guess the story is about depression, which I kind of see there's some parts there, but the thin kid himself, I was just confused about him. And a lot of the characters were very unlikable. I couldn't connect with any of them. I found them to be very pretentious and annoying, and I don't know if that was the point or not. The end kind of escalates to an insane level. I did like the ending. I think that there's some interesting commentary on Hollywood and the way they treat movies and the people involved in them and especially how Hollywood is towards remakes and reboots which are very popular right now 
but I do think that Curse of the Reaper by Brian McCauley did it much better. Like it was a more fun story and that book includes scripts and scenes from the movies that they actually created and I thought it was just more fun. But I mean I think it was pretty interesting. Like I kept me reading because I, I had no idea what was going on and I wanted to find out but overall I was kind of let down. I am never pre-ordering from Barnes & Noble ever again because I have been waiting for how to make a horror movie and survive for days. It was shipped on Monday and it's still awaiting carrier pickup and it's Friday and my window for wanting to read a book is so slim like I gotta read it when the when I'm like amped up for it. in 70 pages in and so far i'm really liking it a similar story to paul tremblay's horror movie but it's told in a very different way it's very much a traditional structure we're following this horror movie director who wants to make like a true horror movie that's not campy or silly that's truly horrific and also he meets this actress named sally priest and she wants to be a screen queen and they kind of bond together a little bit and they go to this estate sale of this filmmaker who died and he is infamous for having filmed a horror movie called Mary's Birthday and unfortunately a horrific tragedy happened on the last day of that filming and like a helicopter crashed and killed like half the cast and he was searching for the movie at the estate still but instead he found the film camera that the director used to make that movie and he decides to bring it home and he watches it and discovers that there's a video of someone dying tragically so he's convinced that this camera is cursed it's, it's fun it's moving fast and i like that it's a straightforward horror story i love craig de louis <laughs> on this in a while because I feel like I don't have much to say. So I'm about 200 pages in now which I think is about halfway and I feel like this book is more about Hollywood and being a creative person in Hollywood. We're seeing the people, what it's like being a creative in Hollywood. So we get to see the director's perspective as he's trying to make a horror movie that he really wants to make. But Hollywood execs just simply want him to make something commercial, something that's going to sell, and it might not necessarily be the most creative thing. And then on the other hand, we're getting Sally Priest, who wants to be this final girl, this actress, and she's having to deal with creepy executives who basically want women to sleep with them to get the part and stuff like that. Camera element has kind of been kind of like thrown to the side. I think he's finally re-picked it up. Like for the past hundred pages, he had it buried in the backyard because he didn't want to use it, but it's been calling to him. So I don't know. I just was hoping to have more of the cursed camera element in there and a lot more of the horror. But right now I've just been getting that commentary on Hollywood. It's interesting, but it's not what I went 
went into this hoping to get. Really hoping that the horror amps up for the next 200 or so pages because I honestly, I don't know how the book is gonna last that many more pages. So I finally finished this book and I feel like it took me 20 years. I am sad to say that I didn't like this one either. Look, it's not a bad book, but it's just not a horror book. It's more about making a horror movie. It's more about the movie making process and the people you meet in Hollywood and what it's like to be a creative in Hollywood. And that stuff is interesting, but it just took forever to incorporate the cursed camera element into the story for me and there were very long stretches where we're just seeing them actually go through the process of making a movie like him communicating with his producer and the audition process the writing process and that stuff is boring and i didn't find the character of max the director to be that interesting when they do finally incorporate the cursed camera element into the story it was it was too little too late for me i was already done by that time mentally and the ending was interesting it was cool to watch the carnage kind of play out it just felt like it wasn't seriously trying to be a scary horror story it was just making commentary on the ridiculous the ridiculousness of being a creative in Hollywood just comparing this to this these two books reading them back to back I don't know if it was a good thing for me because it just it kind of annoyed me <laughs> like, they're both very cynical and they weren't really celebrating horror movies they were just kind of criticizing them and that's not what i wanted i wanted to have fun with these and i didn't have fun i found myself bored with both of them but i mean i i still think that they're worth reading if you're into that thing i think i was just expecting something entirely different if you read these books and liked them please let me know in the comments because i want to hear your thoughts about it i feel like i i've been struggling with my thoughts thoughts because I didn't love them but I didn't like completely hate them. If you've made it this far in the video leave me a knife emoji for slashers slasher movies in the comments um and yeah thanks so much for watching guys I will catch you next time bye <laughs>